What's up, guys and gals? Your host with the most, Griever, as always, bringing you guys the latest chapter review for Jujutsu Kaisen. And we're going to get right underway because I actually really like this chapter. Number one reason, we don't jump away from anything. You know, I know we're trying to follow multiple plot lines, multiple stories and stuff, but it feels like ever since the Maki stuff, which some people hate for some reason, I thought it was really cool, um, but for, for the most part, we have been like sort of swapping between different characters, different people, even if they're in the same building. It's like, oh, let's focus on Kilala and Panda, and then let's focus on Yuji and Hikari, and then let's focus on Megumi, and then let's focus on Higurama, and let's focus on, like, we've been jumping between people this entire time, and it's sort of like it's breaking up the chapter a little too much for me. So it's nice to have a simple page 1 to 20, just simply... Let's focus on these two characters in their fight. Let's go, right? So, I do like this chapter, though I will admit it took me a little bit to fully understand, uh, not the, how the domain expansion of Higurama works, but exactly how the sentencing went. I didn't understand for the longest time because the wording is a little suspect, but for the most part it was just me reading a little too fast and making assumptions. Um, because the whole evidence thing, it was like, you had to say, I never entered the store. I'm like, the entire time, I, I had to read it a third time. I really had to read it a third time to fully get it before I went, how does this make any sense? Could somebody explain it to me? Uh, it's because I missed the one little part because I was like, there's a screenshot, right? There's a screenshot of him in the store. So so what, it, what does he mean by all you had to do was say, I've never even heard of that store. He had to deny the accusation and then that evidence wouldn't have proved anything. I'm like, there's literally a photo. How does that... How would that have done anything? I was like, you're a bad lawyer. Like, I didn't understand. So after my second and my third read, once I read my third read, it was near a thrift store to exchange cash prices. That's why they were explaining the whole, that exchange shops, uh, a lot of them do the same thing. So you might've gotten those winnings somewhere else. I can't prove that. So that being the case, that being the case, um, let's talk about this domain expansion because Tengen gets involved and we don't like Tengen anyways, but Tengen gets involved for a quick explanation and stuff. Um, so by the sounds of it, a it's not explained very well in this chapter, I don't think, but he, hear me out. From the sounds of it, the sure hit, sure kill method is a two-part thing. The domain expan expansion is a sure hit, and it's also a sure kill. The issue is, as Tengen explains, that that becomes a very high-level technique, sort of like um, if you're doing an RPG, you sort of have to pick a skill tree to get the mastery of one and you got to level up really high to master two to get the mastery level skills of two separate skill trees, right? You can do it assuming the game allows enough points in their game, but it takes a long time to get there, right? That That's not that's not amateur or mid-level people can do that. So according to Tengen, domain expansions were a lot were a lot more vast back in the day because people only focused on the sure hit, as in once you're in my domain expansion, you need to follow a set rule that I've set or, or the, the rules of the domain. They're focused on the short hit, not so much the short kill method, which by adding the short kill method, it seems to become a very highly coveted technique, but very, very difficult to actually pull off. So as Tengen points out, it became known as an extremely high advanced, high level technique, and not a whole lot of sorcerers can use it because too many people nowadays in the present day focused on the double meaning, not the initial meaning. So it sort of makes sense why Higurama, of all people, would get a cursed energy, a cursed spirit, whatever, and in like literal days, literal days, had a domain expansion, a domain expansion that worked because it's not a sure kill, it's a sure hit. So that's what I think they were going for. I think they need a little more explanation about that because. I don't know if that's a perfect explanation either. That seems to be the case. That seems to be the case. It's sort of like, okay, if it was an RPG, level 25, you can unlock domain expansion with sure hit only. Or if you wait till level 45 or 50, you can get sure hit, sure kill domain expansion. And in the present day, a lot of people are sort of tabling the level 25 boost and they're waiting until they get to level 45 for the full domain expansion. That, that's the easiest way that I could understand it. Does it make sense to you guys? I don't know. But either way, uh, I really liked the chapter. I really did um, once I fully understood it because I really like Higurama. I really like that one chapter with him. 
uh, explaining his backstory and stuff. I give a shit about him. He's a cool character. He's got a cool concept. His domain expansion is incredibly unique, and I like the idea of it. I like that it actually, like, it applies to both of them, yada, yada, yada. And it seems as though uh, the cursed energy becomes stolen if, once the domain expansion, it ends, they get out of the courtroom, and then, boom, at the end of the chapter, of course, they're fighting. And Higurama, this is how he's taken down so many people. He wins the court case. They get robbed of their cursed energy as a result of losing the case inside the domain expansion. Maybe it's timed. Maybe it's limited in some way. But either way, and that's how Higurama has managed to amass at least 100 points, right? So either way, I just really, really enjoyed this chapter. I, I really just thought it was interesting and uh, the idea of... Um, Everyone has something guilty sort of idea. Everyone has something that the, the Judge Man, which is uh, apparently we got the name of Hingarum's uh, Cursed Spirit, is the Judge Man. And the Judge Man is not patient or whatever, decides everything. It's not Higurama who decides. Higurama presents his case. The, de uh, the defendant presents their case. And they have three, apparently three options. They have confession, denial, or silence. And, of course, lying goes under denial because it did, you, you know, you're not really... You know, you're, you're still lying. You're still denying. You know, you're falsifying if you tell a lie. So um, you're still denying what I've presented to you. So Judge Man knows everything about someone and picks a crime that they believe has happened. So um, now, surprisingly, out of all the things that UG could be accused of, this is what we go with. But it, it does actually end up working and stuff. And I like the fact that UG, for some reason, he thought it was a good idea to lie. Now, as I said, all it would take is a screenshot of him walking in and he's screwed. Number three would have been a good option, I believe, but he threw it out. Now, number three apparently was the wrong answer, of course, but all I would say would be, okay, I know I entered that shop, I know I went there, and I know I played, and I know I won. Now, assuming there's no cameras in the building, there's probably a camera outside showing me entering the building. Now, if that's the case, confessing that I used it to go to the washroom, sure. But he should have thought of the fact that he won. Where did he exchange his money at? As the lawyer points out. So as Higurama points out, like they share a lot of things. Like we don't ha actually have proof you ever entered the building. We have proof that you, because you confessed to entering the building to enter the restroom, but moments later on the same day we saw you exchange at an exchange counter with a CCTV uh, camera so like honestly I think that uh, number three was his best option I think UG lying was the worst option that put him in the worst position and he should have known better than that but once again UG's not Utah let's so uh, yeah um, but also the fact is is that uh, he should have remembered the details about it like, the, it said, he said the judge man is not too patient, but Yuji should have th sat down and thought about it a little longer. He should have went, hmm, okay. Because he even said, I went in there and I think I won. Well, wait a minute now. Think about it for a minute. You don't need to know the law of Japan like Higurama does to notice, wait a minute. If I exchange that and they have a record of that, you know, in some way, if they have a piece of evidence that proves, so now you have to go through the method. Okay, how would they know that? Was it put on a credit card or something? No, it was cash money. Okay, did I have to show ID for that? Okay, did I? Did, was the ID scanned? Was there a camera? You got to think of places like, um, like uh, broker shops and frigging cash money shops and exchange shops. There's a camera behind all of them. There's always a camera there. So he should have realized this very, very easily. Now, Yuji's not exactly big-brained. He's a shonen MC. But, uh, like, realistically, I feel like Yuji should have been able to figure that out a little bit. It shows off Higurama being a badass. It showed, sort of shows him off going, ah, see, here's your options. Here's what you should do and stuff. And I, I, and I would argue, throw, being thrown into that situation, you might not think of it. But if somebody brought up something that I did, like, you purchased liquor, uh... You know, at the at a bar when you were 17 years old, blah 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 blah, right? I'd be like, oh, okay, and they'll they, they said they'll tell me what bar and what day. Now, even though it's been a lot of years since I was 17, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to remember if I ever pulled that off, 
right? I'm pretty sure I'd remember, and then I'd go, okay, but how did they figure it out? Did I pay with my debit card? Did I pay with cash? What did I do? How did they figure that out? Because they only have one piece of evidence to present, so I would have to figure that out. And Yuji does have time because he goes through all the options, one, two, and three. He just picks the worst, in my opinion, out of the two options. Silence, in my opinion, would have been better. And number three was probably his best choice. Number th Option number three was his best choice. Even though, according to Higurama, it was not the right choice, it still would have been the better choice. Because now, not only did he confess to going into the store, but he lied about the reason he went into the store. And they know it. So at least if he had, as option number three state, yes, I could confess that I went into the store underage and I shouldn't have. However, uh, like I'll confess right now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Yes, I did and I'm sorry. That, once again, he's banking on the fact that there is no option for a lighter sentence if you confess your guilt. We don't know that either. We don't know what the option would have been had he confessed fully and apologized. We don't know if the judge man works that way. Under under normal law conditions, judges can either be more, cru uh, I, I used the term cruel, but the more critical, more harsh, and they can be more lenient. I assume the judge man also can act in this way. Maybe, maybe not. Hard to say, but uh, yeah, either way, I just really enjoyed the chapter. I thought it was an incredibly interesting ability. I think this is probably my favorite domain expansion. Like seriously, it's got to be one of my favorite domain expansions. It really does. It's just, it's so much more intriguing. It's a lot more fun, you know, because uh, domain expansion with this whole, oh, I can't even domain expansion. You're dead. Like, and clearly that's never fucking the case. So, um, it, or sometimes it is, but for the most part, I was like, I'm going to domain expansion. No, I'm going to domain expansion. It's sort of like, okay, it's nice to see something that's more like, let's get rid of that whole, oh, I hate you, so you're dead thing. Let's, let's. Let's delve into domain expansion as a more interesting concept. I sort of like that. Um, but anyways, yeah, so really like the chapter. What did you guys think of it? Uh, it was a really good chapter for me. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically it, ladies and gentlemen. That was chapter 164 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. And definitely, if you guys are interested, uh, definitely go check out the Volume Zero trailer reaction that I did. Uh, the Volume Zero uh, is getting a movie adaptation. I reacted to the trailer the other day. Uh, I'm really hyped for that because it's got to be my favorite part of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's not even part of the main series. So, uh, But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and fourth, and most importantly, drink responsibly as always, as I always do. We'll see you back here next time for chapter 165 of Jujutsu Kaisen. At least now, we got one good chapter as far as the culling game starts, as far as I'm concerned. So, that being the case, we'll see you back here next time. Peace out.